Wet blending, my word. That is one that so many people I feel like want to know, want to utilize and capitalize on because it can be a wonderfully fast and not forgiving, but functional technique because it can create truly seamless blends. If you've got the capacity to practice with it, you can do some wonderful and amazing things with it. So what is wet blending? Well, as it perhaps sounds, you are blending wet paint. Now, you're not blending the same wet paint, you're blending different colored wet paints together. I wanna start with just the real quick thing here. Wet blending requires you to blend two different colors on a miniature. But the thing is, acrylic paint dries pretty fast. So you have to be pretty conscious and pretty quick with what you are doing to make sure that your blends are, well, blended and working sort of harmoniously. But that's also a choice of color, I guess, as well. We need to be quick. We don't have time. So with that being said, we then need to be aware of what colors we are utilizing up front ahead of time before we put it on our model. With that, us knowing what we're doing, we will really struggle to pull that off on the model itself. For the people who are just starting out with wet blending, I would really recommend picking the colors that you're thinking about utilizing for your wet blend, add it to your wet palette first and blend between those two colors and just practice there on it. Because you've got all this time, you can see how those colors are gonna interact with each other. And that gives you a sense about what you're about to do on the model before actually doing it on the model, which I think is a good thing to have and worth practicing, worth seeing, if those, especially if those two colors will do what you want it to do. But of course the question is, why do we even wet blend in the first place? Why do we want to do well? We want to create lovely, truly seamless blends. That's one very good reason why we want to do it. We could think about a fire, for instance, where I've got, okay, someone's holding a fire in their hand because they're magical, obviously, or oh, their hand's on fire and that's bad for them. But you can go, oh, well, fire's got multiple colors in it. It's gonna have red, it's gonna have orange, it's gonna have yellow, okay. Well, we know that red and yellow added together creates orange, okay. And we could do that on the palette ourselves to make sure that's true before we're even doing it. And then we could take the two colors, say we can start with yellow first, and then we could take red and bring it in and then start to mix it in and then pull it down. Putting two colors in separate places and then quickly blending between those two colors, meaning that we're gonna get like yellow top with an orange middle and a red base. Stuff along those lines of that. Generally, wet blending is used early on in the painting process. You'll do it perhaps as a base color before you add any of your mid-tones or additional highlights to it because you have to quickly work with these colors. You're not really able to build layers up in intricate locations. So it generally works for more zonal areas. So I would say like a cape would might be a good place to utilize it. Skin can also be a nice place to use, especially if you're working with shadow into light or you've got gradient that you're trying to create. Any time that you have a gradient is when wet blending could be applied. But again, you still need to know which colors you're gonna work with and you need to probably try them first on a wet palette to see how they interact and then apply that to your model. Now, because we're dealing with a fast drying time, if you want to or you find that you're struggling with getting those blends right because of the amount of time, then I would recommend utilizing an acrylic retarder of some kind. I actually use it for occasionally for glazing. I do use it for wet blending from time to time. And it's just nice to have around just for those just in case moments. Because you're dealing with wet paint, it can be very quick and very, very effective. You can do a large area and create this truly lovely gradient in no time at all, which if you were to do it by layering, it can be quite slow. It really is something you need to practice and kind of come to grips with, but I would say it normally exists in a more base layer territory. And then once you've gotten those nice transitions going on, then you build up additional layers on top of it, you know, picking out your mid-tones and your highlights. And once you kind of got there, you've done most of the base work. So one thing I've heard with wet blending is zonal blending. That might sound a bit fancy, just zones really. It can be done where you are working with a miniature of some sort, where you know ahead of time where you want certain colors to exist. 
Now, I feel like this is a more advanced concept and idea because I think a lot of beginning painters and even intermediate painters don't actually know quite fully what they want to do before they start doing it. Part of doing it is the exploration of finding out where you kind of end up rather than like knowing up front. But if you have a sense about what you're trying to achieve before you do it, I feel like wet blending can be a really cool, really interesting and fun tool to utilize. And so zonal blending is just the concept of knowing throughout the general part of the model what you're looking to achieve. And if you know that you've got certain shadows in certain places, you've got certain lights in other places, like maybe a lighter belly, but like darker colors in the armpits or in the shadow territories, you want the head to be a slightly other color rather than the rest of the body, then I could take those paints out, put them in my wet palette and quickly build up all of these layers pretty fast. And so with a bit of retarder would be useful just because it gives you more working time. You can do it to the entire model, creating effectively different zones of the miniature, all being perfectly gradiented because you've effectively wet blended the entire thing together, giving you a wonderful and interesting start point because then you can build your subsequent layers on it and you've already got this lovely blended stuff going on there already.